On today's show, Polestar announces pricing for the Polestar 2 in the US. A Porsche Taycan 4S beats its EPA range rating by nearly 50%. And Ford unveils an all-electric Mustang Cobra Jet drag car that's certainly ready for some fun on the drag strip. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you're all well and safe and ready for an entertaining 10 minutes or so to help get your mind off everything else going on in the world. Polestar has announced official pricing for the US market launch of its Polestar 2 electric car. At $59,900 US dollars before incentives, that's just shy of 99,724 Kiwi dollars. The Polestar 2 is far more expensive than some of the competition, but it's actually priced lower than many in the industry were expecting. With a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack and an expected range of between 250 and 275 miles on the US EPA test cycle, Polestar is outperformed and outpriced by Tesla's Model 3. That said, I think it's still going to gain a decent amount of interest from those who are looking for something that's got a more premium feel and is not a Tesla. And the market is most certainly big enough for both models. Lucid, like other automakers, is feeling the bite of stay-at-home orders, but just like us, they're finding ways to get things done outside of the office. In the case of Lucid, this means putting together a very nice video covering the winter testing that two Lucid Air prototypes took part in earlier this year. Filmed in northern Minnesota, where winter temperatures drop down to negative 33 degrees Celsius, Lucid put its Lucid Air Beta 4 and Beta 5 cars through the kind of tests that every automaker puts their cars through before making a car ready to enter into production. Driving on ice tracks, circle tracks, handling courses, and of course in deep snow, the cars performed as expected And while the majority of owners will never put their cars through that kind of endurance test, well, it's certainly fun to watch. Thanks to some new software updates for Tesla's latest Raven generation of Model S and Model X cars, Tesla says that Tesla Performance Model S and Model X cars built with Raven hardware can now perform the stoplight sprint in a very short period of time. Model S takes 2.3 seconds, while Model X performance models with the same drivetrain will get a 2.6 second sprint time. This is made possible thanks to a new mode called cheetah stance, which makes use of adaptive air suspension to hunker the front of the car down for better traction. Tesla says the software tweaks also give its cars three times the thermal endurance than previous software iterations, as well as 45 more horsepower. As Electric notes, it also means that Model S performance now matches the Dodge Challenger SRT Demon in the stoplight derby. That's a showdown I can't wait to see. Official range figures, be they from the notoriously optimistic NEDC test cycle, purely fictitious JC08 Japanese test cycle, or slightly more realistic EPA test cycle, are often criticised as being impossible to match in the real world. But as several journalists are discovering, the official EPA range ratings for the 2020 Porsche Taycan 4S, 203 miles if you're interested, is far less than the car can actually manage in the real world. In many separate tests, different journalists have managed to extend the 4S's range to more than 300 miles with no problem at all. Since automakers play a massive part in reporting their car's range to the EPA, and thus can easily underquote range or overquote it if they feel the need, I think this may be employed by Porsche to ensure that, even when driven hard, the Taycan manages the quoted range in the sales material. And that, frankly, is a really smart move. It's not how far you can go, but how quickly you can charge. 
That's the message from Audi, which published a new video this week showcasing how much quicker its e-tron and e-tron sport back are to charge from empty to full than other cars in the EV marketplace. While the e-tron is limited to a maximum charging speed of 150 kilowatts right now, Audi's video and accompanying data shows that its vehicles can charge at 100 kilowatts or faster, nearly all the way to 80% full. This, by the way, is made possible because Audi hides a significant amount of battery capacity at the higher end of the state of charge. Audi argues that because its cars can charge from empty to 100% full in 45 minutes versus a claimed 90 minutes for its unnamed competitor, it's actually faster to travel in an e-tron. I would certainly love to see someone put that to the test. Like Lucid and other automakers we've been covering in the last few weeks, Rivian is keen to let everyone know that it's still working hard on the R1T and R1S electric pickup and electric SUV. And this week it showcased footage of a pre-production prototype being constructed at its facility. Essentially a body in white vehicle, the R1T is seen going through the production process and while a lot of the construction is done in a labor intensive way, rather than an automated production line that you would see later on in the process, it highlights the progress that Rivian is making on its way to market. Rivian has already stated its vehicles will be delayed due to coronavirus, so here's hoping things can spin back up as soon as it's safe for everyone to return to work. Talking of delays, Ford has confirmed in a roundabout sort of way that the Mustang Mark E will suffer some delays due to the pandemic du jour. While Ford hasn't publicly stated to the press that production will be delayed, reports come in that some European customers are receiving notification from Ford that their cars will be later to arrive than initially promised. As we covered in a show a few weeks ago, Ford is busy working on the Mustang Mark E, even though social distancing is still in effect around the world. With engineering testing and building iterations of the car's suspension and handling software at home before testing them out on engineering prototype Mark E's. It's not clear just how long the delay will be, but with at least some of Ford factories working on other things like essential medical equipment, the delay won't be known until things have calmed down a significant amount. With fewer people travelling around the world, demand on fossil fuels has dropped significantly in recent weeks, and that's led to a massive glut of crude oil. And while oil producing, or should that be oil extracting nations, are still pumping oil out of the ground, fewer people are wanting to buy it. And that led to prices for crude oil going negative this week, with future traders who normally buy rights to crude oil in order to then sell them off at a profit, actually paying people to take oil off their hands before it made landfall. It led to some pretty inaccurate news reporting, but suffice to say, no, it's not going to kill EVs, and no, it's not going to lead to free petrol. When Ford unveiled the Mustang Mark E electric SUV last November, it came under a lot of fire from hot rods and purists unhappy that the Mustang name was being given to something that frankly did not look like a Mustang. Although Ford did make a one-off hot rod for SEMA called the Mustang Lithium, which was based off a Mustang, purists have still had a mixed reaction. But now Ford has unveiled another one-off car that I think will get hardened Mustang fans interested the all-electric Mustang Cobra Jet 1400. It's more powerful, quicker, and faster than Chevrolet's e Camaro, and promises a low eight-second quarter mile thanks to 1,400 horses. I'm ready to see it in action. And finally, if you've seen my personal Twitter or you follow my other YouTube channels, you might know that I've recently become a chicken parent. And I've been enthralled at how smart our chicks are after just one week and how quickly they learn to follow me, mum, around, just like ducklings and goslings are also known to do. Well, now researchers at RWTH University in Aachen, Germany, have spun off a startup called Droid Drive, which uses that very principle of following the leader to develop a lightweight, semi-autonomous electric delivery vehicles. They work by following behind a leader, a human riding a special hybrid electric delivery vehicle in the demonstration case, to make little trains of electrified delivery vehicles that can go places normal, full-size delivery vehicles can't. I think it's a great idea, but I know some of you will think it is absolute utter quackers. 
And on that note, that's your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, you know what to do. Make sure you hit the notification bell too so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you're at it, while you've got a browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the change. And if you do, you will help New Zealand wean itself off dirty fossil fuel and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for centuries to come. We'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.